Well, hi there, boys and girls. Today we're going to take a look at our last error statement, which is going to be the Lagrange error bound. It's also called Taylor's Theorem Remainder. This information down here is from uh, Paul Forster. He's written a lot of math books. It gives a good comprehensive list of what we're doing. Um, a partial sum of a series is where we truncate the series and we just take a sum of the first few terms. And the, the tail is what's left over. It's all the terms that we leave off. The remainder is what you get if you add up all the terms in the tail. So f of x is equal to our partial sum plus what we left off. Now this error that we're going to make is whenever we say f of x equals a partial sum, we're wrong. Um, we, we've stopped the summation and so we've left off the remainder. So our error is exactly the same number as the remainder. An error bound is something that we know is greater than the remainder. So we're going to give a maximum error statement and we must know that it's greater than the actual error. When we have an alternating series, we know that if we stop an alternating series to approximate the sum, then the error is always less than the absolute value of the first term of the tail, the first term that we leave off. Now the integral test for convergence says that the improper integral is an error bound. That's where if we stop the, stop the terms, we take the integral from where we stopped to the end. All right, now Lagrange, Monsieur Lagrange, is credited with saying that you can find the exact value of your error by finding the next derivative of f, and I'm going all the way down here to Taylor's theorem here, finding the next derivative of f, and z is this magical point to where that's in between our interval a and b and if we stop right there if we find that derivative at that magical point and we plug it in this formula then that's exactly equal to our error so we have this truncated list here we've stopped it and r sub n of x is the remainder now usually we can't find that exact magical point to evaluate that next derivative at but what we can do is we can find the maximum value of that next derivative and where z is some point in between x and c, and we're just gonna say we're gonna find the largest derivative we can in that interval, plug it into this formula, and we've found an error boundary. This, this would obviously be larger than the actual error. Now on the AP test, they usually say absolute value of, this would be the fourth degree Taylor polynomial evaluated at one fourth, and this would be the actual function value of one fourth. This is the exact error. And so they show it like this, and they're asking you to show that the exact error must be smaller than 1 over 3,000. And so what the grading standards show was we had to maximize the next derivative after 4 is 5, so the fifth derivative of f, over 5 factorial times 1 fourth to the fifth. This was centered at 0, and we're trying to evaluate it at 1 fourth. So this was like 1 fourth minus 0. So this is how, what we're going to have to show. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. So here I'm given some information about f and its first, second, and third derivative. Let's write the third degree Taylor polynomial for f about x equals 2 and use it to approximate f of 2.3, give three decimal places. Very, very common kind of question. The first thing I'm going to do is write that the third degree Taylor polynomial in general form would be f of 2, or centered at 2, plus f prime at 2 times x minus 2 then plus f double prime at 2 over 2 factorial times x minus 2 squared, and then plus f triple prime at 2 over 3 factorial times x minus 2 cubed. We've been using this formula a lot, so let's see if we can just plug it in. They've given me all the pieces of information, so my third degree Taylor polynomial is going to equal f of 2, which is given to me as 6 plus f prime of 2 is 4 times x minus 2 because we're centered at 2 minus 7 over 2 times x minus 2 squared because the second derivative was negative 7 over the 2 factorial and then plus 8 over 3 factorial times x minus 2 cubed. So there's the third degree Taylor polynomial for f. That's not so bad if you know the formula. Now use it to approximate f of 2.3. Well, f of 2.3 is going to approximately be equal to our third degree Taylor polynomial at 2.3. So we're going to plug 2.3 into our x to approximate f. So this will be 6 plus 4 times. 2.3 minus 2 is just 0.3. 
minus 7 halves times 0.3 squared, and then plus 8 over 3 factorial times 0.3 cubed. And that is going to, because from my calculator, that worked out to be 6.921. So the third degree Taylor polynomial is an approximation for the actual function value. Now part B says that the fourth derivative of f satisfies this inequality. The fourth derivative is always less than or equal to 9, the absolute value of it, from 2 to 2.3. Now what's important about 2 and 2.3? Well 2 is where we centered it and 2.3 2.3 is where we try to approximate it. So this is giving me my maximum value for my next derivative. Notice the fourth derivative would be the next thing that we would have done here. So it's the next derivative. So our formula says that our error must be less than or equal to, this is a boundary, the maximum value of the next derivative, which is 9, times x minus c to the fourth. So this will be 2.3 minus 2. We're doing an absolute value here, so I'm just going to do bigger minus smaller, to the fourth over 4 factorial. So this is going to be an absolute value. We don't have to worry about this because that's going to be positive anyway. Now this error from the calculator works out to be less than or equal to 0 0.0030375. That's not a very large error, but that is a maximum error. It has to be smaller than or equal to that. So now what we're going to do, we're going to combine A and B to give an interval, some, a, a, a lower bound and an upper bound. So if we do 6.921, which was our approximation, and we subtract the error, this must be less than or equal to the actual value of f2.3, which must be less than or equal to our approximation plus our error. Now if we do this, I get 6.918, I said 6 and wrote 9, my apologies, is less than or equal to f of 2.3, which is less than or equal to 6.924. I subtracted and added our error to our approximation, and I have a, an, a window. f of 2.3 is bound in between these two numbers. So the next question says, could f of 3 equal 6.922? Yes. Why? Because 6.922 is in between 6.922 is in between 6.918 and 6.924. Could f of 2.3 equal 6.927? No. See my interval. <laughs> I'm not going to write it out again. See my interval. All right, now let's do a one where we have to calculate everything. So I have to write a third degree Taylor polynomial for f about x equals 0. And so I always like to write the general form. But so that's going to be p sub 3 of x is going to equal f of 0, we're centering it at 0, plus f prime of 0 times x plus f double prime of 0 over 2 factorial times x squared and then plus f triple prime of 0 over 3 factorial times x cubed. My 0 and my 2 sort of fell apart here. Please forgive me. All right, so we need to find p, p sub 3 of x. There should be a little 3 right here. So I need to f find some derivatives here. So let's see if we can do that. f prime of x is going to equal 5 cosine of 5x plus pi over 3. The 5 is here because of the chain rule. The cosine is there because that's the derivative of sine. Now, f double prime of x is going to be the derivative of that, which is going to equal 25. And it's going to be negative because the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So negative 25 sine of 5x plus pi over 3. My third derivative of x is going to equal the derivative of that. And then the derivative of negative sine is going to be negative cosine with the chain rule is going to be another factor of 5. So I have negative 125 cosine of 5x plus pi over 3. Now what we have to do next is we have to plug in 0 to all of these so that we can write it out. So let's just see what we have. f of 0 is going to equal 
we plug in 0 for x into our function. 5 times 0 is 0. 0 plus pi over 3 is pi over 3. And the sine of pi over 3 is the square root of 3 over 2. Now f prime of 0 is going to equal plugging in 0 to this one. 5 times 0 is 0 plus pi over 3 is pi over 3. Cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half times 5 is 5 halves. The second derivative at 0 is going to equal, here's my second derivative. If we plug in 0, we're going to get pi over 3. Sine of pi over 3 is the square root of 3 over 2, and we have that negative 25 there. So negative 25 square root of 3 over 2. And then my third derivative at 0 is going to equal, we've got pi over 3 here. Cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half times that negative 125 is negative 125 halves. So let's plug those into our general formula. So our third degree, Taylor polynomial centered at 0, is going to equal square root of 3 over 2 plus f prime of 0x, so it's plus 5 halves x, and then plus f double prime of 0, which is right here, minus 25 square root of 3 over 2, and then over 2 factorial, and that's going to be an x squared. And then finally, minus our third derivative at 0, which is right here. So that's going to be 125 over 2 over 3 factorial x cubed. Those compound fractions, I'm just going to leave them there. All right, so now we're supposed to use the Lagrange error bound to show that this error has to be less than 1 over 1,200. So the first thing we want to do is we want to find the next derivative. So the fourth derivative is going to come from the derivative of this, which is going to be 625 sine of 5x plus pi over 3. And what we want to do now is we want to figure out what is the maximum value of this derivative on the interval from our center to where we're trying to approximate it, which was right here, it shows me that's 1 15. How big can this thing get on that interval? Well, now, with sine, what's the largest value you can get for sine on any interval? The sine of this is always going to be in between negative 1 and 1. Negative 1 is less than or equal to the sine of blah is less than or equal to 1. So that's always going to be a safe thing to substitute in for sine or cosine. The maximum value of sine is 1. Times that 625 is 625. So this answer for the maximum value is going to be maximum is 625. So let's throw it into our formula. Our error is less than or equal to maximum value of the next derivative on the interval that you're working with times your interval, 1 15th minus 0, to that fourth power, because we stopped at the third power, so we're going to the next term, over 4 factorial. Now, I read this question actually came from an AP question, and this was a non-calculator question. And I'm supposed to show that this is less than 1 over 1,200 without a calculator. And I felt like that was rather challenging, but I'm going to show you how you can do this. So we're supposed to get that 625 times 1 15th to the 4th. I'm going to drop that 15 to the 4th down here. We've seen that before. 15 to the 4th times 4 factorial. And I'm supposed to show that this is less than 1 over 1,200. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to break this 15 to the 4th up into 5 to the 4th times 3 to the 4th because 15 is 5 times 3. It just so happens that 625 is 5 to the 4th. 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 is 625. And then the denominator I have, oh, that's supposed to be 5 to the 4th, so we're going to scratch that out. 5 to the 4th times 3 to the 4th times 4 factorial. Those cancel, and I get 1 over 81, because 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is 81, times 24. So that was a lot of work to get down to the fact that 81 times 24 is 1944. So there's my maximum error, which is smaller than what you're telling me it is, 1 over 1,200. So I'm showing that the error would be smaller than that. 
So you'll practice this tomorrow in class, and I will see you guys then.